In this video, I'm going to dive into what happened with the exchange in China and how that affected the price of Bitcoin. Then take a look at Robinhood, the COO, saying that DeFi is coming and that they want to include staking and yields for their members, which is huge. Next, take a look at the Derivatives Decentralized Exchange, which is beating out Coinbase in volume. And I'm going to take a look at the market. You can see this coin is absolutely ripping. Then take a look at Warren Buffett's granddaughter. So Warren Buffett, old man hates Bitcoin. Yes, we know this. His granddaughter, though, is diving into crypto as an artist selling NFTs. And here are her NFTs, which I will cover in just a second. Then take a look at a U.S. senator who is slamming the SEC chair, Gary Gensler. And that guy's name is Senator Pat Toomey. So if you like this kind of content, hit that subscribe button and make sure to follow me on Twitter as well. So diving into the first story, what's going on with China? And I will share why I think it's really, really bullish that the price of cryptos rebounded pretty hard against that latest China ban. So Huobi is one of the first major crypto exchanges that has reacted to China's latest crackdown order that said it will now treat all crypto-related transactions as illegal. Yikes. So OKX, another big exchange in China, has not yet made any announcement about user suspension, but Huobi already did, and Binance, which is obviously a huge exchange, suspended new mainland China user registrations through Chinese mobile phone numbers. So the crackdown from China continues, but you know, the price of Bitcoin and the entire crypto market was down about 10%. Now it's up. Very, very bullish that we are rebounding so quickly. Take a look at Robinhood. And uh, this is huge news. So Robinhood's forthcoming crypto wallet is the first step towards helping customers use their coins to do things in the crypto ecosystem. So she says, we are enabling our users to take the crypto that they own, move it off the app if they want to, opening up a broader crypto ecosystem. This is the COO of Robinhood. She says it also enables users who want to consolidate on a single platform to come to Robinhood, get commission-free trading and all the app benefits that we have. So what they're expecting is that, yes, people are going to be moving their crypto off of Robinhood, but she's also expecting a lot of people to move their crypto into Robinhood. Uh, people who have crypto with maybe Cash App or... They have crypto with Coinbase or Gemini. She is right that people like to consolidate all of their financials into one app, into one ecosystem. So as much as you know, some crypto may leave, she also believes that a lot of crypto is going to come. And I think by allowing people the choice, it's going to actually bring more crypto onto the platform. Because right now, people don't have a choice. But when you give them the choice, say, hey, if you want to take your crypto out of here, you're welcome to. They may say, you know what? I don't really want to. I kind of want to leave it here. And that's what she's probably saying is going to happen. So she also hinted that she'd like to let customers explore DeFi. Now, this is huge. So recently at Mainnet 2021, the CTO, Johan Kerbrat, said, quote, we can't tell too much about our roadmap, but something I'm really excited about is staking. When we are talking about the inflation rising and savings accounts that are not producing any yield, I think staking could be something very interesting for a lot of people. Now, I just posted, uh, so Robinhood app recently said they want to enable crypto staking and yield. If you think Celsius Network should partner with them, like and share the heck out of this. I mean, how amazing would that be? obviously for Celsius, but also for, for Robinhood. That would be massive. And I think that's what they're going to be doing. Uh, they're going to be partnering with other companies to allow you to stake your Cardano, your ETH, hopefully your Bitcoin, definitely your stable coins. This is going to be a huge, huge thing that's happening. I'm very excited to see it happen. So next, take a look at this derivatives exchange. Chinese traders are flocking to it. I'll be honest with you guys, I never heard of this before. I'm not a big trader, as you guys know. So the Chinese are concerned over the crackdown, but it's like, you know, you hit a you hit a mole, it goes into the dirt, it pops out another hole. You can't get rid of this. You can't stop this. And that's what we're seeing. So according to CoinGecko, Didex has facilitated more than $4.3 billion worth of trades in the past 24 hours 
beating out Coinbase's $3.7 billion volume. That's crazy. And the weirdest part is the founder of this exchange was a former Coinbase employee. So a Coinbase employee leaves and then beats Coinbase at their own game. Pretty cool. So a large number of Chinese users will flood into the DeFi world, says Colin Wu, who is a China-based crypto reporter. He also says the number of users of MetaMask and this Didex, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, excuse me, will greatly increase. All Chinese communities are discussing how to learn DeFi. So shutting down DeFi is a lot harder than shutting down a centralized exchange. It can be done though. Can they shut down uniswap.org? Probably. You know, can they shut down websites? Yeah. Uh, Can you shut down any website that's not essentially hosted on, uh, you know, like a blockchain domain? Yeah. So, you know, what's happening is that the government and regulations and and regulatory bodies around the world, they are pushing their stranglehold on innovation. And crypto users are like, okay, we see you. And if we're playing chess, fucking checkmate. And I'm going to keep moving my checkers around, not checkers, I'm going to keep moving my chess pieces around the board. And you're going to have to play catch up with me. And that's what's happening. And that's actually what's always happened with Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin gets a bad rap because, oh, it was first adopted by uh, criminals, right? Guess who first adopted the internet? Guess who definitely first adopted pagers and cell phones? Did you ever see that show, The Wire on HBO? It's a great show. It's one of my favorite shows. Uh, Yeah. Uh, drug dealers, criminals, they had pagers and cell phones. So new technology is usually first adopted by people who are criminals. And I don't know why I'm talking about that. Obviously, these guys are not criminals. These are just people living in China under a very repress- repressive regime playing whack-a-mole and we are winning. Heading to Warren Buffett's granddaughter. I never thought I'd say that in a video. So Warren Buffett, old man yells at crypto. I just uploaded a, a YouTube short uh, me being a goofball, there was some old man on the news saying, we need to regulate cryptos. And um, that's how Warren Buffett probably feels. We need to regulate this stuff. Because guess what, dude? You're like in bed, you're making love to the regulators. Like you, they are your best buddy. They're, they're wiping your butt. So Nicole Buffett says that selling NFTs kept her afloat and expanded her audience during a time when in-person shows and galleries were impossible to hold. So yeah, she makes NFTs. She's an artist. These are her NFTs. I think they suck. Don't tell her that though. Price floor of two ETH. People are buying these things for, I don't know, $6,000. Probably because she's Warren Buffett's granddaughter. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why anybody else would would buy, would spend $6,000 on finger paintings, but you know, whatever. Heading to the next story, Pat Toomey slamming Gary Gensler. And what he says is that regulators must proactively provide rules of the road to industry. Unfortunately, the SEC has instead adopted a strategy of regulation by enforcement in this area. Now, I've covered this before. The SEC is seeking to get clarity by taking people to court and by attacking people legally. And and Pat Toomey is saying that that's not how it should be happening. He says, Please identify the specific characteristics that distinguish a cryptocurrency that is a security from one that has been deemed a commodity. Problem is is that Gary Gensler and the SEC have not been doing that. Gary Gensler is even saying, oh, maybe stablecoins are a security. And Pat Toomey is like, that's impossible. You're not expecting a return. You're not expecting a, you know, to make any money from those. So I'm glad that we have uh, senators and people with power who have balls and are willing to call out people with more power. I'm really glad that that is happening. So taking a look at the market. So we are now over $2 trillion. Before we were at like 1.9. The market rebounded quite a bit. And will it go down again? Who the heck knows? I don't know. Nobody knows. Literally, nobody knows. I don't care if you're talking about support lines. I don't care if you're talking about we have to hold the 200-week SMA. I don't I don't care. Nobody knows, right? And I know a lot of those YouTube stations are very entertaining because they give people a, a sense of understanding about, okay, well, this is what needs to happen. And, you know, if that makes you feel better, watch them. That's fine. But I I, I watch them too sometimes. <laughs> but at the end of the day, nobody has a freaking clue what's going to happen. Except over the long run, 
cryptocurrencies are going to grow. Bitcoin, Ethereum are going to grow. The total market cap is going to, you know, hit 10, 20, 50 trillion dollars, in my opinion. That's all that I know over the next, let's say, four to six years to a decade, without a doubt. So take a look at the winners. We have that exchange, the derivatives exchange up a ton. This thing is on a tear. We have other DeFi platforms doing very, very well. And again, that's what's happening. People in China are like, we got to learn DeFi. So we have Uniswap, Sushi, Comp, Aave. So it's plain whack-a-mole. I mean, you really can't put the genie back in the bottle. The genie is out of the bottle and uh, there's nothing anybody can do about it. Nobody can do anything about it, guys. So that's it for the video. Hit that little subscribe button if you like this content. I would greatly appreciate it. Until next time, talk with you soon and bye for now.